Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. This week, we're heading back up to McMillan River. Oh, same thing. Oh. You know, last week, Vicky pounded a monster, a 70-inch bull, which is unbelievable. Huge, beautiful. I mean, he was massive. He was. Massive. It was a great shot, 30 yards. Beeman went right through. I, I mean, and, and that, you know, that, that says a lot when you talk about performance. Yep. You're shooting under 60 pounds with her Hoyt, and that arrow, beam and arrow with the Hellraiser, NAP Hellraiser, went at 30 yards, went completely through. We could not find the arrow. Right. That's, that's huge. This week's lucky logo is NAP. You NAP, NAP, Ultimate and Broadheads, Arrow Rest, and Fletching. So at the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do with that. So we have Moose Mania. It's your turn. Let's get you it's out. It's about the, time. Let's get you out there up in the Yukon, McMillan River Adventures. Let's, it's your turn. Let's see if we can get you a moose. Yep. Okay. Ralph, Ty, and I, we go heading up right into the shore through the thickest stuff that you can imagine. We got up through all this deadfall into an open burn area. This bull was covering a lot of ground fast. He had his nose up and you could see his nostrils working, just trying to catch our wind. I'm still in too thick of stuff to get a shot. The bull, when he stopped and he looked at us broadside, I was like, oh my gosh, he is the widest bull I have ever seen on hoof. I mean, this thing was just Huge. And finally we got to the position where that moment came where I knew that if I didn't take that shot, he's gonna wind us and he's gonna be gone forever. Vicky comes to full draw, she releases her point spider. Yeah. Yeah. And that demon yeah. goes right through this massive Yukon bull. He's going, he's going, his back end's going down. His back end's going down. Oh, my arrow, I think my arrow went through it. I think my arrow went right through it. Oh, he's big. He's huge. Oh my god. Look at how wide he is, Ralphie. He had everything you're looking for in a McMillan River Bowl. He's got beautiful fronts. Look at the long fronts on him. Remember big fronts. And I know Ralph always goes, it's not about the width, but you know what? He's almost 70 inches, 68 and three quarter inch bowl wide. I mean, Ralph, you haven't even beat my 65 inches yet. How the heck are you gonna beat this one? <laughs> it, it was so cool. And yeah, she did it again. <laughs> I've had a hard time be beating the 65 inch stuff that she's put down. Now, it's 68 and three quarter. 68 and three quarter. I think I'm just gonna go for points. It's calm, fog settling in a little bit, but it's still, so we might be able to hear some bulls grunting. My first day out, Vicky shot a monster yesterday and see if we can make it happen. Finally, it's my turn. And I gotta tell you something, we have fun with this, but I, it don't bother me one bit. I love watching her and, and, and all of us sharing it together. It's cool and I don't care if it went to day 10 and I never got an opportunity. You know, it's, it's all about sharing it with, with my wife, my best friend and my best hunting partner, Vicki. And, and also now when we can get RJ going more and more, it's, yeah, it's a family affair. Let the engine warm up here a sec, and then sure. we're gonna fly on down to where we've been seeing those cows every morning. Okay, yeah. Check on them, see if they brought anything in. From there, we're gonna go down to the other end where we've been chasing that big bull around. Well, you guys saw that big one. Yeah. Because he's a little bit bigger than Vicky's, you think, right? Yeah. No. We've been saving that one for you, Ralph. Oh yeah, You'll, yeah, you're gonna save something for me. <laughs> That'll be the day. It's time for Moose Mania, Ralphie style. We went to a location that morning at the far end of the lake where we'd seen a really good bull previously. We started the hunt there at daylight with no luck. We sat and called for a couple hours, no response, never saw a thing. Don tells us, you know what, weather's moving in. Couldn't you tell? <laughs> the forecast was for some bad weather. 
So I felt we had to get it done in the next day or two or we were gonna lose all opportunity. So we figured, you know, we've we've got three days left of our hunt. We may lose a day, maybe two. So we gotta have mother nature on our side. And sure enough, we did. On the way back towards camp, we decided to pull into a bay and walk up this little ridge that I've been up in the past. As soon as we got out of the boat, we had to go through some real heavy cover and we were breaking branches and making moose sounds as we were going. And we thought, you know what, the wind's pretty good right now, so let's, we'll beach the boat, we're gonna hike up in there and see what happens. We walked through these alders, and lo and behold, I think because of the noise, and Don actually did some grunts, just in case anything was nearby. We're walking up the hill, this young bull comes running and stopping and looking. He was hot to trot. He was looking for a cow, and he thought we were it. It was a bull that Dickie and Ralph and Tyler had seen the previous day in that same area. So we went back down towards the water to the boat, and he came out of the brush right behind the boat and just kind of stand there looking at us for a little bit and decided he wanted nothing to do with us, which was okay because he was a younger bull. He has great potential in a couple years. Maybe we'll get another opportunity at him. Obviously not a shooter bull, but we played with him there for about an hour or two, called him around us, he circled, finally had enough of us, and he left. You know, That's, he's heading exactly where I want to go and sit, so go back up there. I think during that hour or so, a cow calling and playing with that ball, we attracted another ball from probably a couple miles away. All of a sudden, Ralph hears a grunt. And we hear, ooh, ooh. And I'm like, we hear a bull, a bull, and he's straight out front. And we're looking across the bay, and lo and behold, we see this bull, and I see good paddles, and we see good fronts. So we go down to the shoreline. Don grabs the cow decoy, and he's starting to call and rake in the water. And Vicky and I get positioned right on a point. We think we're going to work him. He's going to come right through the, the reeds in the water, come right through to get to that cow decoy. Everything's good until you feel that wind hit you in the back ear. He just stops cold. No grunt, no nothing. What do you do? Leave him, come back and try him again. Or we go up on top and try to get the wind right on him. So we gave him about two, three minutes. We knew he was gone. We ended up, instead of us quitting on that bull, because we still knew we had some things in our favor, and one of them was he was so hot to trot. The bull had went silent. We weren't sure what we should try. We decided to go for it, grabbed our gear, made a big half mile circle in an attempt to get in behind the bull and get the wind right again. Don, Vicky, and I made about a half a mile circle, got back up on the ridge, got to a vantage point. We're glassing, boom. We see a paddle going through the spruce and it's him. It looked like a decent bull. Ralph said, yeah, let's make a try on him and see if we can make it work. Don starts raking doing a little bit of grunting. This bull stops, turns back, he's looking at us. Yeah, baby, he's coming. Don, Vicky, and I made about a half a mile circle, got back up on the ridge, got to a vantage point. We're glassing, boom, we see a paddle going through the spruce and it's him. We crested the only open spot on the hillside where we had any kind of visibility into the valley, and sure enough, we spotted him. A few soft cow calls, and he turned and came right at us. This time, we had the wind in our favor. Don starts raking, doing a little bit of grunting. This bull stops, turns back, he's looking at us. Yeah, baby, he's coming. So now he's committed, he's coming in. We got the wind in our favor. We have to start to close the distance. 
When you're working a bull in, you know, there, there's so many variables. One is the wind. Number two is you have to challenge him and simulate a cow call, and then you try to go with the bull almost identical to elk hunting. He's coming. He's coming. The only difference is, is moose don't have the eyesight that an elk does. Now, they can catch movement from a long ways, but when we wear the black shirts or the dark brown shirts with the paddle and you're raking and everything, at this time of year, you get them so frenzied up that looking ain't their priority. They want to start showing off. And when they start showing off, they start to wave their head back and forth. You see the whites of their eyes, and they're just going, ooh, ooh. And then they start coming closer and closer. And you rake, and they rake, and it's like a chess game. And then he's going to go broadside. And when he goes broadside, well, that's the opportunity for us bow hunters to make the shot. That bull was like he was on a string. I'd cow call, he'd grunt and come. He'd stop and rake. I'd challenge him a little bit, he'd grunt and come. It looked like this was gonna work. He was looking for a challenge and we were gonna give it to him. We were in a real thick area on the hillside with very, very few openings or any shooting lanes that was impossible to get a shot at. So we decided to try to advance on this bull quickly get down to where he was, and maybe have a little bit more open type shooting conditions. Don knows the lay of the land. He's like, we, we're gonna get stuck in this thick stuff. We gotta get him before he gets to there. Well, that didn't work. The bull decided to come even faster and met us in some of the thickest stuff we could have found. Well, he comes through that slough faster than, than a snowshoe hare. Boom, he comes through, so we figured we gotta do something. Realizing what was happening, I decided our only chance would be to get that bull within 10 yards. So I, I got Ralph and Vicky into a little clearing so they could maybe have a good shot opportunity. I dropped about 15 yards away, challenged the bull and tried to get him to circle and come to me. We're here and Don says he's gonna try to bring them around. So Don steps about 15 yards in back of us, showing the paddle, raking, grunting. This bull walks right through these little saplings like it's nothing. And you watch him and you hear him and he's coming through the bush and just tearing stuff up. Well, I see this little opening. So Nikki and I get set up and I think it's gonna be a pretty pretty close shot. I, I, I didn't realize it was gonna be as close as it was. You know, I really had to keep my wits amongst me because I knew he was coming, and he was coming on strong, and, and I, I didn't realize how close he was gonna be. As the bull was approaching 15 yards distance, the bull decided to circle, and got within three to five yards of Ralph. That bull just kept coming. But the bull was facing him nearly head on and there was absolutely no shot opportunity. I zoomed out as far as I could, couldn't get the entire moose in the frame. This bull is not stopping. This bull is nonstop coming, coming, coming. At about five yards, five, four to five yards, this bull comes in and I know this is it, man, I gotta make this shot, cause yeah, it's getting, it's getting hairy. Come to full draw, I'm waiting at 15 yards, 10 yards, eight yards, seven, six, five, and I figured he moved his shoulder, I released that beam in, that, that Hellraiser stuck right where we needed it. And as soon as Ralph released an arrow at like four yards, I thought our game was over. Vicky's in back of me, Don's 15 yards in back, this bull takes the arrow, puts his antlers down, and comes at us. Little bit of an adrenaline rush. I know I jumped, Vicky jumped, I don't know what Don did, and this bull spun around, took off about 10 yards, 
and started coming back. I got another arrow knocked and I'm coming to full draw because I gotta try to put enough, this guy wants us. I don't know what's going on. And all it was was his adrenaline. He was so locked up and coming to fight his challenger. Man, that's all he had on his mind. So lo and behold, he just ended up taking off. He ran about 100 yards or so. And you know, I think I was in shock. Arrow's right in, good, oh, good one. I know Vicky wanted to kill me because every time she films me, she, we get real close to getting charged by something. That was cool. I was a little worried for their safety, to put it, you know, mildly. I, I thought this had potential to be a real bad situation. I'm gonna tell you what, if that don't make you bring back your cereal from the morning, I don't know what's gonna. Wow, that sucker, he was coming. I seriously think, thought you were getting run over. Yeah. When he put his head down and came, I thought you were done. I thought I was gonna pick, be picking you up from beside me. I really did. What do you say to your wife when something like that happens? A giant Yukon bull almost tramples you and you say, oh, no worries, honey, I got you covered. <laughs> Moose mania, baby. After about 45 minutes, we decided to pick up on the blood trail, found a broken arrow and some really good blood within the first four or five yards. We trailed him for about 100, 150 yards. We were marking some blood and stuff, and uh, I spotted the bull laying just off the edge of the game trail up ahead and pulled a little bit of a prank on Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. McMillan River. <laughs> He's getting bigger. <laughs> Oh yes! Look at the look at the fronts. Yeah. Hey buddy, you and I had a close encounter. Sorry, but I won. This won't beat Vicky's. I, I I know that. But the encounter will. Huh? Yep. Come on, the encounter was that, that's a 9.5 out of nine, not encounter. <laughs> <laughs> No, the reality of this is, is this was an incredible hunt. And we saw him from across the bay. Don started calling, cow calling and everything. And sure enough, he came in. Lo and behold, worked him in and he came like four yards. Unbelievable. That's why we come here to McMillan River Adventures. I mean, we're up here in the Yukon and every year, don't kid yourself, every year it's not like it's going down. It just keeps getting better. Wow, what could you say? You know, and, and you know what you know, I sort of recognized, and, and I hope everybody saw that, is all of a sudden you see the ground. I mean, when you have a cameraman in back of you, you're supposed to take one for the team, okay. man. You Time were supposed out. to stand there Two and just one. I'm get a camera the footage. Girl, not a cameraman. To that bull, oh. he was from like me to Freddie. He was less than like four feet from us. And he was suck it up, you watched slow motion. You watch those yes. willows just fall over, and that branch almost hit me. And I didn't drop the camera. I just went down for half a second. You ran. Came back up. You I jumped. Recovered. You jumped. Your face you was just like, oh, oh my gosh. I was right there. I was. Uh, no, I was your face. And Don thought he was going to have to call like medevac or something yeah. to get us out of there because he had no idea what was going to happen at that point. But that's that's, that's why we move on up in the Yukon with it's Don. It's the adrenaline. Oh it my is. gosh. <laughs> okay, lucky logo. We got to call that. NAP. If you saw the new Archery Products logo, you need to log on to archerschoice.com. Oh, Click on the lucky logo button, fill out some information, and someone's going to get some great stuff from NAP as well as other manufacturers. Yes. We appreciate you guys watching this week. We'll see you next week. Same time. Same channel. Right here on the Archer's Archer's Choice. Choice. We get that too excited so, when you Because it, it was so <laughs> cool. He was, he was like from there and he ran and you ran. I mean, I didn't run. I took one step. You should have. You I just almost got hit. You got to just stand, there, stand your ground and take it. Okay. So you stand your ground right there and you take this. Ooh.